Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. It has been just a little bit since I did a visual video for you guys. Warm up, visual video, that's an interesting statement. Yes, it's been a while well since I've done a visual video. There is audio video, you know. No, what I'm trying to say is it's been a few minutes since I've done just a warm up for you guys. Um, I've had some breakthroughs with my existing business and I've been so busy that I haven't been able to do some videos for you guys. Um, you know, I've done some reviews and stuff, but it has literally been just a huge amount of time since I've done, you know, warm up and I know a lot of you guys know that I do warm ups pretty much every day and you know, sometimes I tape them, sometimes I don't. And it's just been that, that I haven't been able to do it. Because it takes time to edit, it takes time to video, you know, me doing this process. And I just haven't had time to do it. So that being said, that's what we're doing today. We're doing a warm-up. I encourage you as budding artists, as individuals, as professionals, to keep that spark alive. Um, as you traverse the wonderful world of commercial and uh, private art. You know, I am at my core, I am a character artist. I love doing characters. I love watching cartoons. I love watching animated features, you know, and absorbing all of those different types of designs and whatnot. And, you know, doing a simple warm up every day, you know, a couple faces here and there really helps me get my bearings in the morning. So what am I doing? Faces. Just some simple faces. You see that I started out with a circle and I'm doing simple shapes and moving on to more complex uh, ideas as I traverse through adding clothing and generally just kind of building on the character as I go. I like doing pirates. I like doing cowboys. You know, and all those types of characters. And basically, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm doing some cowboys this morning. I also got sick. I got really sick. And if you watch back through some of the videos, there's some, you know, some sounds of me kind of clearing my throat and coughing and whatnot. You know, more than just seasonal allergies. And. That's kind of where I had to draw the line whenever I was doing my videos. I was coughing and I had to stop and the videos were taking longer and I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to get better. So I don't know what I had. I'm, I'm pretty sure I had, because I had COVID back in the day, you know, at the end of 2019, early 2020. And then, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sick after that. I didn't get sick at all through all of the COVID stuff, you know, and then... I got really sick, just huge, horrible body aches, and I actually taped myself during me being sick, and I had a video, it's here on the channel, about me working whenever you're sick, you know, and that was a video that I wanted to, you know, do, and I talked about how even though you may be sick, as a freelancer, you still have to work, and that can sometimes be taxing. You know, your health comes first, obviously, but, you know, you don't want to wake up and after you feel better and suddenly realize you don't have any more clients. So definitely check out that video. Um, it's a few videos back, so just look for that one. But yeah, I just had a cough and it was kind of bad. You know, and then I had some, that cough is what really lingered. Okay, so what am I using today? I'm working on Bristol board. And I'm using a simple Prismacolor Cali Race pencil. I believe these are Prismacolors. I think they are. This is the 2004 Photo Blue. And I believe um, whenever you, you uh, scan this, uh, it scans black. Actually, it doesn't. I think whenever you copy it, it copies black. Either way, I like this because it's smooth. It doesn't smear. And I don't have any artifacts inside of the... Um, of the lead. 
Now, of course, this isn't graphite, but it's just a lead. It's just a reference to the material inside the pencil. Um, what have I been doing in my in my professional illustration life? A uh, lot of character work. A lot of you know style guide stuff. Um, toys. Gosh, uh, illustration work, product design. It's just been a deluge because, you know, I, I, I think I said this a while back that what happens, you know, whenever you have a, um, an event like we've happened and you have a lot of the companies that basically they shore up everything and they cinch up everything, what inadvertently happens is there will be a time when all that comes back. And we're seeing that. We're seeing a lot of it come back. It hasn't come back full force, and actually, it's it's a little, uh, I don't want to say worrisome, because I don't really get worried about stuff like that. Um, let's give it some hair. It comes down right here. You know, I don't base my business model on one particular uh, client. I have multiple clients. It's like having multiple campfires, and you tend to one fire, one fire gets really bright, and then the other fire goes down, and then you, you know, you tend to the fires. I never have all my eggs in one basket, per se. Um, so what is happening right now is we're seeing some of those parks and seeing some of those entities open up. We're seeing some more venues open up, um, which is good, but now we're having a little bit of a, uh, a pullback because of some of the guidelines the CDC have released in reference to masks. They haven't shut down businesses and stuff because I think that would be folly. But on the other hand, I think people, you know, are still trepidatious about going out because I see a lot of mask wearing even up here in the mountains. And I don't have anything against people wearing masks. Trust me, I don't. I mean, I know that the coronavirus is real. I know the Delta variant is real. There's no question about it. I just think that, you know, if you feel sick, stay home. If you, you know, want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't, don't, you know, and, and that's one of those deals where it's really the responsibility of the citizen. So, that being said, <clears throat> um, we are seeing some of those things change a little bit, and that's completely normal um, in the context of how, you know, we're trying to traverse this new world that we're in. Okay, so that being said, getting back to drawing, I know I've kind of gotten off on tangents and, and whatnot. I don't want, I'm never, this is not a political channel, this is not a COVID channel. This is a drawing channel. So, what is the overall reason behind doing stuff like this? I don't really use these characters for anything. Um, let's do this. Make him really long. I don't use them for anything other than just practice. And that's important because even though I don't really use these for anything, I still have them. And, you know, eventually one day I can go back to my sketchbook, go back to my drawings, and these act as inspiration. So that's one benefit. Number two, it, it connects your muscle memory and it reaffirms all of those pathways that you've learned over the years or you're trying to develop. The pathways being, let's do this, let's go here. The pathways being the pathway between your hand, your eyes, your wrist, your arm, your muscle memory, understanding how to think three-dimensionally, reaffirming those principles and drawing, all of these things are important in becoming a better, more rounded, um, more consistent, and that's the key, more consistent artist. Um, you know, nothing frustrates uh, me more than to see somebody talking so much, saying they want this, they want that, and then not putting in the time and effort it takes to actually get there and then complaining about not being there. You know, that's that's one of those deals. It's like, why can't I be rich? You know, well, being rich takes an enormous amount of work. It takes, you know, a lot of sacrifice and, and rich being, you know, monetarily speaking, why don't I have more money? Well, money doesn't come. It doesn't grow on trees. That's what my mom used to say. Money doesn't grow on trees, Michael. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. And then, of course, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Money is made of, like, paper. It, it actually does grow on trees. What are you talking about? You're confusing me, Mom. And that was, <laughs> I'm just, I'm jesting. But, you know, doing stuff like this is, 
I always explain it to students and I say, drawing a little bit every single day gets you that, that pathway. You know, you're, I call it chopping down trees. You know, because in your, the forest of life, you know, this is a, this is a fun metaphor for all you, for all you kiddos. You know, chopping down those trees of life takes effort. It takes time. It takes diligence. And unfortunately, and this is, this is true of any generation, I'll be honest with you, because, you know, my generation, people are like, you and your 80s MTV and your and your popcorn and your root beer with your MTV generation. They call us the MTV generation because I grew up whenever MTV came out. And, you know, they didn't, they didn't have a lot of confidence in our ability to be adults. And, you know, you see that today. They put down on millennials. They put down on basically anybody. They put down on anybody that's not their own generation because there's only one true generation. That's the World War II generation, the best generation ever. And I think there's some truth to that, but on the other hand, you know, we still got great things going on, you know? But, uh, you know, it takes hard work. It takes a lot of hard work. And that's what I always tell people. It's going to take much longer than you think to be a success. And here, let's do this. <laughs> and it's going to be much harder than you think. And people are always kind of confused. You know, students were always like, uh... What are you talking about? I post thing on Instagram and I get like 5,000 followers. And it is a different world. Let's be, let's be real about that. It is a different world. But, you know, it does take hard work. It does take effort. And being an Instagram star is not the same as working professionally. Or even a YouTube star is not the same as working professionally in the art world. You know, they expect results. They expect deadlines to be met. And... Whenever that doesn't happen, then it really affects you as an individual and the bottom line. So, that's where I'm at as far as doing stuff every day. I forgot his ears. Oh, snap. I like the silhouette right here. So, I'm going to go ahead and just put some little ears in there. Okay. Nice. Cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a couple more. Haven't quite reached where I want to be. <laughs> um Gosh, what else? Uh, yeah, toys. I've been doing. I've been doing, like I said, style guide work, illustration. Go and have this hat come back a little bit. Okay. And as you see, I'll always have kind of a base. You know, I'll have that general shape. And it's not. It's it's not one of those things where I want to sit down and really noodle. As you see, I'm not really a noodler. I'm a broad, large shape, and then I get into the minutia. Broad shape kind of artist, always thinking about shape language, thinking about what this character is about. And too, a lot of times whenever I'm doing stuff like this, voices will come. Voices come in the night. And it helps me develop the character as I go, right? You wouldn't have, you know, a gigantic, well, you might. I was going to say a gigantic Lummox type character that has a really deep voice. He might. It just depends on how you want to develop the character, right? A lot of times opposites, giant character with a very small little voice is kind of funny. You know, it depends. It depends on what you're doing, <laughs> you know? This one. He may have a voice like this. Mm. 
not very straight laced. Okay. His hair come out. Here's the back of his neck. Comes up. Here's that hat. Actually, his hat. His neck needs to come up here because there's his head. Here's his cheek. Here's that ear. Little things that you always need to remember whenever you do stuff like this. Taking a head, putting it inside a hat. So you can't have the, the, the large part of the head be larger than that opening that it's in. Okay, that's one thing. Two, this line that comes down right here. I've kind of continued it as part of the silhouette. See how it really, it, it gets broken down into these larger shapes. And then whenever you start putting things together, that's why, you know, whenever I, I used to watch cartoonists, I would always watch them and, and there would be that moment where it'd be like a revelation moment. Be like, oh, that's what you were doing, you know. Curve that out just a little bit. Curve that out just a little bit. And then maybe his he's a little bit older, so you have his teeth that are missing. So you're going to have some pullback in his mouth. Pull this down. Bandana. Goes up. Down. See, I'm not really drawing too hard in the beginning, so I can come back and reconfirm and reaffirm and, and put down those lines that are kind of my final line. And we'll do a little bit of shadowing, just a hint here and there. You got the top of that hat. So again, that whole line of action right there. And, and since this is a this is a 40 gallon hat, it's gonna come out and I'm gonna have a little bit of weight here. So I've made this a little bit of kind of a, a stretch, a little squash and stretch kind of wave. And he's walking and it's like don't so the front will come forward and this back hat will come and it'll whip around so thinking in terms of animatable is something that I do quite a bit okay and we'll do one more for you guys all right <clears throat> hmm Triangles typically are, so you have rounded items like this that kind of give a, a, a notation of friendliness. Depends, it depends. You know, there's always that, those variables in there. But triangles, even if I were to go as simple as this, you know, triangles, typically have that indication in sharp edges, have that indication of villainy. Even even if even if that you know that particular character has maybe he's a mayor or and I'm thinking in the context of a western or maybe let's see I have to find this and that comes down a little bit sharper something's just not right. You know, you know something's not right because of his shape. That has to do, again, with shape language and understanding how our, how our minds perceive certain things. You know, we've been conditioned. And you're like, what are you talking about? You've been programmed. You know, you've been programmed. That's why certain norms, certain colors, certain shapes really, how do I put it? You know, they draw on that programming that is there. You know, this guy has a nice rounded nose. So again, that body type with a round, strong jaw, you know he's a man of integrity. You know that uh, he's a little bit older, so he's seen some things. He got a nice thick, thick mustache. So even though he does have a mustache, it's not thin and wiry. So he's got, and it's not real, I mean, if it was bushy, maybe, you know, there would be some kind of notation of uh, back, you know, backcountry-ness. Um, you know, he's got that hat that doesn't really 
You know, it's not rough, it's not sharp, it is round. So again, he's friendly, even though he's got let's go ahead and do these eyes in. He's got some sadness to it. This, on the other hand, you already can see that there's a little bit of villainy there. Right? So let's go ahead and do this down. And broad. I'm still keeping things really broad. And I'm thinking in terms of shapes, you know, even though this comes around and it stops here. You can see I've drawn through because I'm thinking three-dimensionally, and now I've got that hole, which is where his head is, and you've got this line that comes down. So now I've really got an area where I can put his head, and that is an anchor point. You develop anchor points as you draw, and you start sculpting the drawing. That's what I do. I sculpt the drawing. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit sharper. Okay. Comes around, this comes up. So let's do this. Here's the center line. So now I'm going to put. He's got brows that furl. Okay, and he's got this nose pointed. Again, we're going off the theme. Point, point, triangle. He's got, a, he's got an indication of villainy there. Maybe he's a cutthroat businessman. We don't know. That's, that's what's cool about developing you know, characters and understanding design, illustration. You know. Still broad. Still working in the really broad sense. Let's do his eyes. Comes up. Around. Okay, let's make these eyebrows a little bit bushier. Do the same over here. And it's okay if I break that plane right there that goes, you know, for his hat. Because I'm going to come around. His mustache comes here. Acts as that border for his mouth. Here. Let's do some hair. Here. Right about there. Okay. Let's reconfirm that nose. Okay. And then this top of his head comes out here. Go ahead and fix this. Coming around, color in the hair. Okay, straight lines go down. Just a little bit of teeth right there. Okay, go in the center, now do this, and again, I'm thinking form, I'm thinking round, this neck is round, so I'm not drawing a straight line like this, I'm drawing a round line. Good, okay, good, okay. Not bad, not bad, not great, but not bad, not. Okay. Darker eyes. Good color in that stash. Okay. 
Okay, now you see the differences. Obviously, the expression here is a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more, how do we say, harsh. But the shape language speaks volumes to us. Going to color, shape this in. Whereas this guy is kind of gentle. He's got a round chin. He's got a nice hat. Everything about this guy speaks villain. <clears throat> or cutthroat businessman, or mayor, or, you know, his voice could be, you know, you get, you know, be, you get the, you get the, you get the sheriff down there. I want that land. Immediately. And this guy's like, I've already talked to the bank. They said they'd give me another two weeks. I'll give you two weeks in the cemetery. Two weeks in the cemetery. That doesn't make sense. That's why I'm not a writer. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and give him, I give him some whiskers. Yeah. You can always base your characters, too, on animals, different types of animals. You know, maybe this could be like a a wolverine or a badger, and he's got all this hair everywhere. You know, just a little trick for you guys. Base it on animals or something. So that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Just a quick video. I'm, I'm working currently on some stuff for the channel. Maybe a store. You know, we've reached 10,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for all you do for me. It has been awesome so far. Hard, but awesome. We haven't reached that pinnacle yet of, I need to pay for the channel. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Just as long as you guys get something, right? Um, also, you know, trying to balance things a little bit better so you guys can have at least two videos a week. That's my goal. Two videos a week. Definitely. I know a lot of people like uh, fan art. You know, doing, you know, Star Wars or Marvel or something like that. And that's, you know, I do that. I do that in my professional, in my professional career because I work, you know, I do stuff for Marvel, entertainment, you know, Harry Potter and... Gosh. So many different properties. You know, if that's something you guys want to see more of, instead of stuff like this, kind of the baseline core, warming up, character art, stuff like that, if you just want to see a bunch of, you know, fan art, which I don't have any problem with. That's fine if you want to do that. But. And we're going to be doing more stuff in Photoshop, digital illustration, and understanding this. Understanding how to use those difficult programs. I also use a program called Clip Studio Paint. That actually is a wonderful program that I think is not, it's not given enough credit. It is a wonderful program alternative and cheaper than Photoshop. And frankly, it's got some things over Photoshop. Now Photoshop is a wonderful catch-all. It's like the Swiss Army knife. But Clip Studio Paint is one of those great programs. I use it whenever I create pins, whenever I do concept work, turns, you name it. See, again, you know, we're looking at this. I probably could have done a triangle, but I'm okay with this. So he is going to get a circle. I'm going to watch that silhouette. Yeah, here we go. Riding on the sunset. I'll also be, stay tuned too, because the next video that I'm going to do, I'll be reviewing this particular product. This was sent to me by some wonderful people over at Imuki. 
uh, from Instagram. These are paint markers, and I'm going to be actually um, painting on a pair of shoes. So that's going to be my next video. A pair of Vans that I've had around for a while that I don't really wear. So those art markers, those paint art markers will definitely do the trick. So this is what I wanted to show you guys today. Just some warm-ups. Just some fun. Cowboys! So go out and draw something today, have some fun, sit down, spend about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, just a little bit. Try it. Try it for a week. Try doing, give yourself 20 minutes, even if you want to do 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. Sit down and draw something. Find something on the internet that you like, emulate it, you know, draw something. Have fun. You know, if this is what you really want to do, you have to start somewhere, right? Start today. Make it today. Make today the day that you actually start something. Everybody has 20 minutes. If you have 20 minutes to sit there and browse on YouTube or Instagram or, heaven forbid, Facebook. I'm not a huge fan of Facebook, to be honest with you. Twitters. Social media. Then you got time to draw something. Make something of yourself. Do something different. If you want to be something different, you have to do something different. You know, that's one of the things that I learned. I was caught in a rut at a job for over 10 years, and I needed to do something different, because if I didn't, I wasn't going to make it. You know, I wasn't going to make it. Thank you guys for visiting the channel. Like and subscribe. Please share if you can, and stay tuned. We've reached that 10,000 subscriber mark. Thank you very much. I'm going to do a live stream soon as well, and we're going to start building the channel. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon.